brought to you by 1AAuto.com, your source for quality replacement parts and the best service on the internet. Hi, I'm Mike Green. I'm one of the owners of 1A Auto. I want to help you save time and money repairing and maintaining your vehicle. I'm going to use my 20 plus years experience restoring and repairing cars and trucks like this to show you the correct way to install parts from 1AAuto.com. The right parts installed correctly. That's going to save you time and money. Thank you and enjoy the video. In this video, we're going to show you how to remove uh, the radiator fan. Uh, so you need to, if you need to replace either the fan clutch or the fan blade itself. Uh, this is a 2002 Tundra with the V8. The procedure is similar for the V6. Tools you'll need, 10 millimeter wrench to undo the battery, catch pan, 10 and 12 millimeter sockets with ratchet extension, pliers, and two 12 millimeter wrenches. Using a 10 millimeter wrench, disconnect your negative battery cable. Okay, we're going to start by removing a series of 12 millimeter bolts and taking off this skid plate. Okay, so as I'm removing those bolts, a note here, uh, I do drain the radiator down to remove the upper uh, radiator hose. I find that's a whole lot easier. Um, got pretty big hands and arms and without removing that stuff it's difficult to get to uh, the nuts on the radiator fan um, but some may find that they don't have to do that. Uh, but for me it's a lot easier and it only takes an extra 15 minutes or so. Okay once you have that out of the way your radiator drain is right here. It should just come loose with your fingertips. If not you can use a pair of pliers and drain your radiator. While the radiator drains, you can start removing some of the top plates. Uh, two 10 millimeter nuts hold the little name plate on top, and then a 10 millimeter bolt holds that hose clamp. Okay, use a Phillips screwdriver to loosen the clamp from the intake tube to the uh, air filter box, as well as there is an electrical connection on top of the air filter box that you need to disconnect, and then use your screwdriver to loosen the clamp for the throttle body side and then pull that tube up and out of the way. Okay, use a pair of pliers and you pinch the clamps and slide them back uh, off the end of the hose and then the clamps can just stay right on the hose like that. Now twist and pull to remove the hoses from the radiator and the inlet tube. Okay, here we remove the radiator hose clamp on the passenger side uh, upper fitting and just pull that hose out of the way. Four bolts hold the fan shroud to the radiator. You want to remove the bottom two, so I'm showing you one of the bottom ones. Basically remove the bottom two and loosen up the top ones um, until they're just holding on. This was almost impossible. Um, to get the nuts off of the radiator fan, you use two 12 millimeter wrenches, hold one nut with one of the wrenches, and then undo three of the nuts with the other one. And then once, once you're down to just one bolt left, okay, you can see down here, I actually threaded a bolt on uh, backwards, and then you can put a screwdriver in here and use the screwdriver to hold, um, hold the assembly while you loosen the last bolt. All the nuts are off. Kind of shake the fan back and forth while you're pulling. Okay, need a little explanation here. I, I shot this footage while I was doing another project, and for the other project, I removed the radiator totally. Um, removing the radiator totally is not necessary to get the fan out, um, but what you do have to do is, like I said in previously, was to remove almost all the bolts from the shroud, and then as you pull the fan off, then you can take those two remaining bolts out of the shroud and then pull the fan and shroud up and out at the same time. And once you feel that it's loose, um, ease up on the pulling forward because you don't want to have it come forward too fast and hit your AC condenser too hard. Okay, at this point there's a series of uh, screws or fasteners that fasten the fan to the fan clutch. You'll need to remove those um, to remove the blade and then reattach it to the reattach the new one to the clutch. 
Again, I used uh, footage from a different uh, project to make up this uh, video. So uh, what you want to do here is actually, uh, you see me putting the fan down in there, you want to use the fan and the shroud, put them down at the same time, um, and then use the four bolts to hold the shroud, put them into place, and then put the four nuts that hold the fan into place on. Okay, and as far as retightening the fan, um, holding it with your hand and tightening is enough to get it going. Uh, and then what I suggest is a rubber door stop. You can stick it down between the crank pulley and the fan pulley uh, and that hold in place. And you don't need to get it extremely tight. These bolts should between, be between 15 and 16 foot-pounds. Here I'm just reaching over and tightening up those four 10 millimeter bolts that hold the fan shroud to the radiator. Engine, use a pair of pliers to put the clamp back in place. Okay, put the upper radiator hose in place, push it down on the engine side first, and then push it onto the radiator. And then again, a pair of pliers and put both clamps back into place. Reconnect the overflow tube. And we're going to speed through, put the air duct back on, make sure you tighten up those two Phillips screws that hold the big clamps in place, uh, and as well as put the clamp back on that holds the hose to the top of the air duct, and your trim or engine identification panel on the top uh, with the 10 millimeter nuts. And make sure we hook our sensor back up. Uh, there's a hose that may have come off on the valve cover there. And then down lower, make sure those hoses are back in the clamp and it's securely fastened. Be sure the radiator drain uh, petcock is tight and then hang your uh, skid plate back up there and start the bolts on. Okay, now refill your radiator directly with either Toyota or Universal Coolant. Uh, generally, it's probably going to take two and a half to three gallons. The radio cap on. We add a little bit of antifreeze to the reservoir. Reconnect our battery. Okay, so we're running the truck, making sure it's up to operating temperature here. Run a little bit. Check the engine. And obviously what we're checking for is any signs of leaking fluid. Um, but what you want to do, let the engine idle a little bit, make sure it's up at operating temperature, take it for a drive for a while, um, and then you know, again check underneath, make sure there's no dripping fluid anywhere, let it cool down, remove the radiator cap, check the level of fluid, and fill it appropriately. We hope this helps you out. Brought to you by www.1aauto.com, your source for quality replacement parts and the best service on the internet. Please feel free to call us toll free 888-844-3393. We're the company that's here for you on the internet and in person.